Would you like to learn a revolutionary new way to do spherification? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you a new technique that we developed called gelatin reverse spherification. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques and show you new recipes for your kitchen. So remember to subscribe and you'll get notified of our episodes every week and of course, get notified of our weekly giveaway. <laughs> and this week, we are going to be showing you a brand new technique for how to do reverse spherification. And I think the conversation really starts with the basic of what is reverse verification for someone who's never heard of it before. Sure. So reverse verification, uh, and if this is your first time ever hearing of spherification, we actually have a spherification course on the blog now. So if you want to, you can go to blog.monitorspantry.com and you can find it there. But a quick overview is that you're going to take a liquid and you're going to encapsulate it in a thin gel layer. So that layer can then be placed on a plate and popped and make for a really cool experience mm -hmm. that is different than you know a normal saucing or, or you know ladling over the top of anything like that. So we've made up some really, really cool things that use reverse spherification. But this is a pretty advanced form of it. So if, it's, if you're new to it, we suggest trying something a little bit simpler and working up to this. Yeah, so again, go on the blog, brand new course. It's free, you don't need to sign up or anything. Just click on the link that says spherification and you're good to go. Now. Uh, for people who are excited about the new technique, can you tell us what exactly it is and perhaps what makes it different from traditional reverse verification? Yeah, so we, I took the idea of frozen reverse verification, which is you freeze a liquid that has the calcium in it and then you place that into the sodium alginate bath. So uh, sodium alginate bath and calcium, when they mix, the calcium starts gelling the, the sodium alginate immediately, and that's how you get that thin mm -hmm. gel around the outside. So I was thinking of different ways, okay, what can we add or what can we do so we don't have to have that freezing process, right. and we thought of gelatin. Mm -hmm. So gelatin melts, and the good thing about gelatin is it takes a long time at a very low temperature to reset mm -hmm. into a gel, so you're able to make these uh, you know warm spheres that can go onto a plate without the worry of them re-gelling and turning into a very thick, you know, vis viscous liquid, and also you can serve them hot, and we found another thing that was great about it is that we were actually too able to encapsulate fat, which... Uh, we have not been able to do before this. Yeah, so the two big benefits I'm hearing, one, the ability to serve a warm sphere, yep. then two, the ability to encapsulate fat. Can you give some maybe practical examples of how someone might use this in you know, their restaurant or their, or their kitchen? Yeah, so th this is a cool thing is that you can add a little bit of intrigue as, oh, what is that little egg yolk looking sphere? It pops and it's actually the sauce of the dish. Mm. Uh, one thing that we have over here, there's two of them. We have one that's uh, like a demi-gloss, so a very okay. thick, rich um, you know, reduction of beef stock or veal stock, mm -hmm. uh, and also a ramen broth. So Ooh. if you wanted to make a very fun looking plate, mm -hmm. and even before this we were just batting around ideas, is what if we took a uh, French onion soup and we Oh, we gelled the French onion soup and we put fun. it inside of a gougere. Yeah. So you get the gruyere, you get the French onion soup. So there's a, just a lot of different things that you can do. You can make it, uh, ooh, what is that? That's exciting. Then you eat it and it's a very familiar flavor, right? So there's a lot of cool things that we can do to make uh, new dishes or old dishes seem new. Yeah, and that's super exciting. So today, of course, we have a demo plan that's going to walk you through the steps of how do you do this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm going to leave it to Scott to <laughs> share the recipe, but I think one of the fun things that's really cool is that we've always called this spherification. And now, even from what we see here, they're not even spheres anymore. They're <laughs> yeah. any shape you want. So I'm excited to see step by step how do we make this happen. Yeah, I was batting around the idea in my head of like encapsulation, but mm -hmm. uh, whatever it happens to be, it's still the, the process of spherification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we did here, and this is cool because this is uh, this has a lot of fat. This is our hollandaise. This is our hassle-free hollandaise, so this is great. It can be frozen. It can be refrigerated. It doesn't have to just be served and made hot. Mm -hmm. So we have this, and you can find that recipe. Link in the description below, or it's appearing around me in some sort of box. Uh, but this is awesome because I can take this, and now I can add gelatin to it. So this is just gelatin sheets that have been hydrated. 
uh, or bloomed and then melted just in the microwave really quickly. Kay. And this is about five to the recipe that we have. So I'm just going to add this in. This will all be in its own recipe on the blog. So that's the gelatin here. I don't have to worry about this setting. And uh, if, if you want to use our sheet gelatin, we suggest the Perfected Gel Platinum. It's the cleanest flavor. It's the clearest liquid mm -hmm. or the clearest uh, in color if you're using something that isn't opaque like this. Then I have, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to just bump it up a little bit because we're serving it with steak. So we're going to oh, make a okay. Bernays. So this is sherry vinegar and shallots reduced down. Yeah, I mean, the first thing I'm noticing is just how much is happening in that bowl. And typically <laughs> you can't do that in, in uh, spherification. You want your liquid to be relatively like clear, consistent. Well, basic might be yeah. hard for it. You yeah. know, it's like, mm -hmm. so I have shallots in there. I have the vinegar, which is, you know, high acid, which sometimes doesn't work with uh, direct spherification, but this is reverse, so that's great. Mm -hmm. I have some tarragon, so lots of inclusions yep. in this. Right, and that's all inside this sphere that you see wow. here, and then calcium, calcium lactate gluconate or calcium lactate, depending on what you have. Both of them are flavorless calciums, so you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And right now, all I have to do is I can take this, I can put it into any shape mold that I want, right, mm -hmm. and then I can allow it to set. So I set this in the bottom of a silicone mold that was a large uh, circle. Okay, that's a lot of. Uh, holidays, but that's yeah. really fine. <laughs> it's it's these are both measured out at around two ounces, which is a normal for a plating. Mm -hmm. They look like a lot because they're all right. Yeah. It kind this of looks like a pancake. <laughs> yeah, but if it's you like if you cut into that, okay. it, it will run onto the plate. The same with this, and this is great that we have this plate with this uh, inset in it. That when you do pop it, it'll kind of fill some of that very nicely. Cool. So yeah, you can take this and you can set it into molds, right? You can set it into something like oh. this, something like this. Wow, that looks that looks like egg. <laughs> little right, egg cake. Little yeah, exactly. So you can set it into little, little spheres, things. whatever you want. So I can actually just lay it. And what I'm doing here is I'm laying it into the sodium alginate bath mm -hmm. that we have made. And that's just regular, nothing special about yeah, that one. it's a perfected one. sodium alginate, okay. so it's a, it's a nice, you know, quick setting. Mm -hmm. And I have a very large purification spoon, which is just the spider that we use for frying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but since these are much larger, why not use something a bit larger for it? So I'm going to let these set. Okay. The bigger ones, I'm going to let set for a longer period of time. You are going to get a slightly thicker gel on the outside, mm -hmm. but there's going to be a lot going on on these plates. Okay. You're never going to just serve a plate of hollandaise or anything like that. So, there, you know, you, you won't necessarily mm -hmm. notice that the, the gel is too thick. Mm -hmm. Let these set. This will come out the little one in about two minutes. This one I'm going to let go for longer because there's more liquid in there that could burst it. Okay. But in that time, we can start plating our dish. And Jane, if you want to take a look at those and just pop them and just see All how right. they run, that would be cool. So I'm assuming this lighter color one is the stock. It's a ramen. It's yep. the ramen. Yeah, so if you could just pop that, right? It if feels I like a normal, I know. I'm like normal sphere. Ooh. I don't know if that was a good shot. But <laughs> kind of what the difference that I'm seeing is that instead of everything running out together because it's so thick, it's kind yep. of oozy. Yeah, it kind of oozes out a little yeah. bit more. Right, since I'll it is a little bit more too. viscous. All right. Ooh. I really love these. They're kind of almost like candies at this the, point. The warmer they are, the, the more that they will, that one kind of set up, but Yeah, totally I mean, we've fine. had them on the table for a while. Yeah, I can actually oh. take, let me take this one back and okay. we can just show remelting it. Okay. So I just place it back until I have a warm, um, like a resting bath there. Mm -hmm. and that will just remelt it if it happens to set like that. Okay. But these should, run pretty easily this one is yeah that one's a little set but well should we take a break and then yeah when we come back we'll take, take a, a look at how they pop okay and we're back and we're just about ready to start plating the spheres and show you how to make a finished dish but first i want to talk about this week's giveaway which will be 50 grams each of the sodium alginate calcium lactate gluconate as well as a 20 count of the perfect the gel silver or gold or platinum um i think we can they're, they'll all work, but, you know, the silver is what we have mm -hmm. on the table right now. <laughs> so, um, in order to enter the giveaway, you may have already guessed it, but just leave in the comments below something that you think would make a great example yeah. uh, application of this new technique. Because we're really excited to play with this more, but, you know, of course, we love hearing what you guys come up with. It's always so creative. Ah, it's one of the best parts of doing WTF. All right. 
So, Scott, you know, we've had our spheres. What are we doing at this point? Great. So I actually took one of those out. It, we were, you know, obviously setting up and whatnot, and they did set back into a gel. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine. You can take them and place them back into a warm bath, mm -hmm. about 140 degrees, and they'll melt down. So if you want to take that spoon, that okay. this one right here can uh, pop. Ooh. There we go. That's so, exactly what you want, right? And I kind of love how easy this is to do. So if you are watching, you're like, I would love to do something like this in my restaurant. You can prep them ahead of time, put them in the bath, hold them. Exactly. Like there's, there's a lot that you can do here. So please let your imaginations run wild. Yeah. So it, it, any little, you know, anything that you want to add so you know the intrigue of spherification too you kind of can now Ooh. sauce wise i mean to pop this one too if you want to yeah it's that, fine that's it's for fun the fun, fun right. part right so basically i'm just you spidering these things out Ooh. putting them over uh in my my bath and i can let these sit here you know all night and that's you know great you yeah. get that nice uh oozy kind of sauce mm -hmm. perfectly there for you and so i kind of like how you see the d the contrast between the demi gloss and then yeah. the thicker hollandaise <coughs> with especially all especially if you want to have two two going at the same time you absolutely mm. can do that oh. so we're going to plate up our dish here so this is a fun little dish we came up with uh you know just some steak uh a different style of palm on a potato just having some fun but we wanted to match how cool this technique is by trying to make a very beautiful looking dish so this is what I call horizontal pomana. I know it's not traditional. If there's anyone who wants to see a traditional pomana, maybe we can tackle it in a few mm -hmm. uh, episodes. So we have that, and this will help carry our, right, so we have our steak. So everything that's wonderful that goes with some Bernays mm -hmm. here. Should turn that around. So camera can see that beautiful sear on there. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Mm. Now we have just some gooseberries. Gooseberries that have been lightly braised. Great. You can even put them right on top of the, the hollandaise if you want, or the bernays. Yeah, this one really holds its shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you do a little bit thicker, like I said, yeah, it's going to hold up really well mm. through the movement and whatnot of the plating. So we have some salt roasted beets. Good. So things are pretty simple to do, but tasty. Mm -hmm. And when you're holding it, I see here that you kind of, when we were taking the break and we were resetting, that you just popped it into like a warm w sodium, was it just a regular water bath, a sodium alginate bath? Put it right into the regular water bath okay. because I don't want any more skin forming on the mm -hmm. outside. So the regular water bath, like I said, is almost like a holding bath here. Ooh. So good. And just a little bit of yeah. tarragon for visual aid. Considering we are using Bernays. I mean, this is certainly a fun recipe. And you, so I like again, if you're <laughs> if you're like, what are they doing? I don't know what any of these terms are. You need to check out the new <laughs> spherification course. It's really awesome, and it's I, I like today. It's pretty easy to follow along. So logdownmodernistpantry.com. It'll also be in the links in the description below. So when the the guests will get the the dish, you can pop it here, you know, and then the the bernays will ooze out. Ooh, right. Yeah. So you can. You could have like popped it pop right in front of the steak too. <laughs> exactly, mm -hmm. right, right there. And now you can then take it and you can have it with the potato, with the the gooseberries, the beets, the steak, everything about it. Mm -hmm. It'll open up, and you can do it from both sides, or you can even t serving table side. This could be the last part, is you pop the sauce and mm -hmm. allow it to come out. And if it was something like a demi, it's gonna rush out, but this one's gonna ooze out and look mm -hmm. really awesome, uh, depending on what you're plating. Or you can even do this with a hollandaise on top of a. Um, Ex Benedict, Ex Benedict yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And they're so easy. It's done. Played them, played them, played them. Pop them at table side. Mm -hmm. Super fancy, super fun. Ah, that is super fun. So, are we tasting this? All right, I'm going to taste yeah, this. I'm going to taste it. Taste the way. I'm going to taste this one because it just came out. Okay. <laughs> mm, I, I mean, we've had the Hollandaise before. Yeah. You know, it's super rich, luxurious. I love the inclusions that you added. Mm -hmm just makes the flavor more complex and there's a lot going on in here. So hopefully you are as excited about this technique as we are because it's, you know, it's new, no one's really done it. And we're happy to be able to share it with you today and let us know what you think. 
So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett.